Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hey, well, this is a this is a mess, isn't it? <laughs> Wesley, Wesley, remember when we were in Sean's and he said it was like a clown car. <laughs> <laughs> It's exactly what this. I'll tell you, I call I've called the cops on these people several times. Yeah. They take me a little rough stuff, they'll come get them, but they never do. <laughs> <laughs> Sunshine on my shoulders makes me happy. channel welcome to wesley you're kathy coleman from land of the lost i'm allison how are you <laughs> hi wesley hi allison hi darling how are you i'm great how are you i'm good i'm really good i'm so happy kathy's joining us today yeah, thank, thanks thanks wesley for, for uh getting her on here and i didn't cry to wesley when i asked either yeah, yeah. you know <laughs> okay first of all you did so, well, I didn't cry. so Wesley, kind of, Wesley knows me. Uh, Kathy, I don't know if you know this, but Wesley, because I'm a cartoon character, and Wesley actually visited me in my cartoon world. Like we, 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 and we, well, no, we visited Land of the Lost in yeah. the cartoon. Wesley was there. Kathy saw it. Kathy, Kathy, Kathy. In the real world, you got to see it. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Kathy. <laughs> I was wishing. <laughs> To, but to, I don't have red hair anymore. <laughs> well, well, God dang it! Before this thing gets any nuttier, I've got a book out. It's called Run Holly Run, and it's available on Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> well, some, somebody hit the record button on that one. We are recording the right thing now. Everything's yes. good. <laughs> yes. Hey. Well, so much for no, my. So much for getting dropped off in Mexico. Yeah, trust me, it doesn't yeah, always that, go this crazy, Kathy. No, wait a minute, Steve. Well, is this your? Is, is this? Is this your 200th show and you still can't get this right? Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dude, he's going to get I've heard. Just been 10, shows and you can't get that right. Yeah, well. just, I've heard of slow learners. Steve, this is really trying to peeve me off. Oh, uh, I live in Florida. I have an excuse. You know, I bring I bring Kathy Coleman from Land of the Lost for her first time on your show. And look and you happened. imbecile. I know. <laughs> What, oh. what do you mean, Florida? What's wrong with people in Florida? That's well, not nice, Steve. That's that's rudery. Well, just in the, the spot of Florida. Rudery. I live in Florida too. Well, I think that's what he's talking have... about, Ali. He's talking about you when he says this. Oh, thank you, thank you, Terry. But, but you know what? You, 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 you know all. what? Thank you. All day long, and ask Terry and Tony, all day long from the word go, I have been messing up royally. I did at work, so I, you know, I, I don't know. I have my own. We have high school confidential where yeah. I work for a dealership, so it's just endless fun every day. <laughs> oh, oh to, get, to tell you who Allie is in the cartoon world, she played Witchy Poo in the cartoon. Oh, okay. And Steve, Steve, okay, there, was, Steve there was Hoodoo. Ho, ho, yeah, ho. Yeah, I played Hoodoo. Yeah. Yeah. Parody between. So you guys did the cartoon puff and stuff? Oh, no, no, they, they have the. No, we, we didn't have a cartoon puff and stuff in this one. We had a lot of allusions to it. We mm. we had okay. Hoodoo from Lidsville, and we had Witchy Poo. Lidsville, Witchy Poo really there we go. Oh, oh, oh. How's that for a topper? Really, that the was good. No, thank you. Yeah, we did that. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, yeah, you should hear us, Casey Case. Oh God. <laughs> Do you, Casey Case? Coming up no, on America. Be four. Uh, oh, go ahead. Now, before we were so rudely interrupted by like Steve Jardine's own show, you know, Kathy, Kathy was sharing with you a gem. Of, I'm telling you guys, you're going to love I this know. story. Trust me. I got I'm this... going to take you back in time. Kathy's living on the beach with her husband in Mexico. She trains horses by putting them in the water to, to break them. Now, her husband gets mad at her and dumps her. 
in the middle of the Mexican desert, no one around. Kathy, oh, no. it's your turn. Okay, okay. So <laughs> we are recording. They do have, in the middle of nowhere in Mexico, they do have these checkpoints where you're surrounded by, literally, they're called the Federales, and they're basically teenagers in uniform with machine guns. So they make you very nervous, oh. right? Because they're young, and they're carrying deadly weapons, and they speak a foreign language. So... Having said that, I get dumped at one of these things, and like I said, I had a futon, a surfboard, a tent, a couple of duffel bags, and my Pekingese, my little dog. So I go to the desk, and I tell the person that I've been dumped here, and I need help, and they say to me they can't help me. Well, I was exhausted, right? So I just laid down right at the the desk in front of the woman, and uh, about an hour later, they woke me up with three guys with machine guns poking me and said to get up and come with them. Well, so I go outside. They're literally dragging my seven foot six surfboard, my tent, my futon, my duffel bag. And I look at them and they start strapping them to the top of this old Mercedes. And I look in the front seat and there's this older couple in this Mercedes and they're pointing the guns at them. (laughs) So they tell me, they tell me, get into the back seat, you know. So they've tied everything down now, and I get into the back seat with my Pekingese, and they tell those guys to go to the border, drive to the border. Well, I'm like in a whirlwind because I've been dumped by my husband. I got all my stuff. I'm going back to California, and my head's in a spin out. And I, get, we get going a few miles, and these people are German, and they're on their holiday vacation. And they say to me, the guy looks in the rearview mirror, and he looks at me, and he goes, are you going to kill us? I, <laughs> oh, no. I started nice. laughing so hard, I couldn't stand myself. I was laughing and laughing because I couldn't believe that of all the people in the world, in my situation, they were afraid of me. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That so anyway, by the time we got to the border, which took, I don't know, eight hours or something, I told them my whole story. We were best of friends. They gave me some money to wait for my taxi to get me across the border, and they were absolutely wonderful. Mm. Oh my so it all my life is like that, though. It has these nut bar things happen, and then all of a sudden, by the grace of God, good stuff happens out of it, and that's like how the book goes. It's like crazy and then good stuff. Crazy, mm. then good stuff. <laughs> oh, wow. I can't wait. To I'm telling you guys, <laughs> her book is it's, it's called Run, Holly, Run, which, mm. you know, on the TV show... Even in the opening credits, every time we were in the show together, I'd go, Run, Holly, run! There's a dinosaur, there's a park, there's a sleep sack, there's Enoch, there's something. Anyway, but it, it, and, it's a, and it's been selling out on Amazon. It's already sold out on Amazon. They're restocking right now. Oh, so now, Wesley, um, I want to talk about you. You have been Me? working on a film. Yeah, you. Oh, really? And, and I just have to, before we get on to uh, Senior Moment... I uh, <laughs> I have to say that that picture of you in the pool with the rub the red nose is so freaking adorable. I just love it. <laughs> oh, and I wrote well, was- that. I wrote that to you, but I I couldn't like give you as much love in words. I wanted to be able to like scream it at you, and it's so oh. cute. Oh. Oh. Well, you know, guys, it was Red Nose Day. So I got in the swimming pool for Red Nose, you know, on Facebook. We did a whole little tribute for Red Nose Day. <laughs> well, it's a chill really. I'll have to see that. So what's it's happening with Senior Moment, Wesley? Well, you guys, you know, guys, I just finished filming a, a movie with William Shatner, Christopher Lloyd, and Gene Smart called Senior Moment, filmed in Palm Springs. Oh, oh nice. neat. And, and, I mean, it's, you know, it, it was, I was at a restaurant having dinner, and uh, the executive producer, Graham McCluskey, from the movie, stops me and says, I... You're Wesley Year. I go, yeah. He goes, I'm a huge fan. Will you be in my movie? <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. And Kay Ballard. Oh, Kay Ballard. Oh. I got, so, so I got, I, I got, I said, do you want anybody else from Palm Springs? He said, well, sure. Oh. So I called Kay Ballard. I got Kay Ballard. I got <laughs> Ruta Lee, uh, who is one of our, our she, you know, she used to be oh, the, yeah. the, the, do you remember Ruta Lee? I remember Ruta Lee. Yep, mm. I sure do. Boy, I called Lucy Arnaz. 
I called Gavin McCloud. They couldn't do it. Mm. But I got to do a little cameo in the movie, so it should be a lot of it's a romantic comment. Oh, nice. oh that's going to be great, man! You've got everything covered. You got um, Taxi. Yeah. <laughs> you have uh, oh gosh, designing. Women. Not to mention Back to the Future with Back Taxi. to the Future. To me, I don't know. To me, he's always going to be Reverend Jim Ignatowski. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Well, you, well, you yeah. know, in Star Trek, in the movie Star yeah. Trek, uh, he played the villain to Shatner. Yeah, he was. Uh, Krug. God, how do I know that? Oh, my God. Steve would know that. Yeah, Krug on Star Trek Three. Yeah, the little dog. Yeah. Yeah, the Did you guys, here's a piece of trivia for you. Did you know that the all the writers from Star Trek were the same writers as Land of the Lost? I heard mm-hmm. that. Didn't Walter Koenig have something to do with uh, the Sleece Yeah. Deck? I thought so, yeah. With Enoch, the talking Sleece Yeah, Enoch. yeah. Wait, I thought his name was Enos. <laughs> that, that's Wrong show. That's too <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, congratulations, oh, guys, on on the success of your show. Oh, terrific! Oh, <laughs> right. Are we really? Are we really the two hundredth episode? Yes, two hundredth. Wow. Two hundredth episode. We survived a couple shows, Kathy. So you know. And he's lived in a couple. Days. He's been on. He's been. This is his fifth show with us. Is it? Okay, Terry, yes. calm down. I missed one. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> who was? Who was one ninety nine? Okay. Um, just the usual suspects. Yeah. <laughs> oh, don't say that. There, no. there, it was a house painter from Pacoima. Yeah. Was it Enos? Was it Enos? <laughs> I don't. Know orange car with a one on the side pulled up and somebody tried to jump out the window and it just it didn't work <laughs> and uh wesley we had a interesting visit with tony ganyos a few weeks ago he's a fan of yours too oh good oh very yeah, good yeah meat from meat from porky yeah i i saw i saw on your website i, I saw his picture i was like good for you guys <laughs> well, no, you know, good, for you, good for you because he's a fan of you and land of the lost he, yeah. he wasn't a fan of us yeah well, yeah. Yeah. now, did you say he's just a fan of me, not Kathy's, right? No, he loves Land of the Lost. Yeah. Oh, okay. I just want... Yeah, yeah he <laughs> loves Kathy, Better knock it off there, Wesley. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, guys, he, I, let me just tell you something. Old. You guys, I do have to say this, and it's, and it's, it's um, coming from the not-so-corny side of me. But the truth of the matter is, when people say to us, they ask us this question all the time, are you guys really like, you know brother and sister off screen mm-hmm. where we we truly truly are exactly like brother and sister and i'm going to give you a shining example of it because <laughs> we're competitive mm-hmm. and wesley says to me i told him i go wesley did you see that they put your blurb you know what he mentioned about the book i go did you see they put that on the cover the front cover of my book and he goes yes i did above your name as usual <laughs> 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 and then and then he has to put the icing on the cake with the next time your publisher runs off some more books, tell her I'd like it in a little bolder print. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but but here's the six dollar question here. Okay, here it is, here it goes. Who has the last word in your book? Because you always had the last Me. word in each scene. Me. All right. Yeah. 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 So yeah. fine. All right, I'll give you that one. <laughs> Holly always had the last word. I remember that. Yeah, but, but I get to close it. Shut <laughs> <laughs> up! I'm telling you guys, her book is extraordinary. I, I it, you know, I, who knew that little Holly Marshall from Land of the Lost mm-hmm. would not only lead such an extraordinary life, but be such an amazing writer. And this is, I'm not blowing smoke. I'm telling you, this book is so good. Mm -hmm. It is riveting. And Mm -hmm. I know, no, really, I know people that, that, that don't, you know, it's one of those books you start reading and you don't put it down. Mm -hmm. Definitely got my curiosity about it now. I'm definitely going to order. Yeah, yeah. I love it. We're we're going to. We're going to buy that book and read it on the air. And I was just going to say, we can have readers theater on the air. <laughs> well, was, you could also say that you know that story about the German people and nobody else does. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't want to wait. Story. Did you ever go back to Mexico after that? Because I wouldn't. Mm. Oh, no, no, no. Are you, you have to read the book because 
I, I was a glutton for punishment. I, I went back three or four times. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh. You didn't drink the water. As I say, you don't want to wait for the movie for this one. You want to read the book. Yeah, I, yeah. I, and, 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 to this, and to this day, and to this day, I always go to that checkpoint to get a free ride back to the border. It's just oh, yeah. been wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> People that line up and they say, well, Kathy Coma got a free ride. I want a, and I want a Mercedes. No, I want, I want a Jaguar. You know, I, you know it, it, it's gotten really competitive now at that spot. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got. I, I want to get back. I want to get back to your book, but before I forget, I got hurt the other day and thought about you, Kath. Uh, I got entangled in some smilax vines full of thorns. It reminded me of the smilax. Case. <laughs> Only Terry would do that. I got tangled in those in Mexico too. Yeah. They hurt. Uh, yes, they do. Well, though he sure Terry, I got the vines. He showed a picture of the vines, and if I saw something like that, I'd call an exorcist. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to tell you guys that the the, the the spoof on Land of the Lost and Saturnalia that you guys did of all of us was hysterical. Oh, and uh, it was so much fun, and the fans have just loved watching. I, I, you know, I, I, I put links on my Facebook to, mm. uh, to, the, to the episodes. That you guys did, and and people are loving it. Oh, that's good to hear. Oh, that's same oh, same you. thing on my Facebook page too. Yeah, I, I actually drew, didn't cut this out, Steve, because it's. it's <laughs> really, 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 Here but we I, go. I actually Here we I, go. I, I, I drew the uh, 2017 Land of the Lost thing you put on your your Happy New Year thing, Kathy. You did what? The, the 2017 Happy New Year that you posted. Oh, with, uh, oh, uh, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. You drew yeah, that? Drew that with, yeah, I drew that with all you. You know, that was kind of like I used your characters that were in Saturnalia. There, right? It was fabulous. It was, yeah. I would have got really, you on there, really Kathy. Fabulous. Yeah, I would have got you on there, but, uh, you know, I had my horse costume on, and you offered to be on it, and you said to meet you after your Q&A, and, and then went, you, you ran off. And I owned a chase after you in the horse costume where I'd been tackled. And I kind of felt bad. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> I'm going to cry about it. There's this crazy horse running after her. Yeah. <laughs> no wonder she was running after her. But a horse with spikes all over his bridle and everything. Yeah, well, that's why horse. it's called Run, Holly, Run. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Wesley. That means a lot. And we enjoyed seeing you there. Oh, Even yeah. if you that were was wonderful. Night. And we're making another one. If you ever, if either one of you want to do a cameo again, you're always welcome to. It's going to be fun. Count me in. All right. Got me too. I, I'm game. Yay! Yeah. Neat. Neat. You got to know that. Terry, Terry's a tough director, though, so you know. <laughs> before you <laughs> guys hang up. Yeah, before you guys Did hang I ever up. Tell you, I, years ago, I had a company. I, I used to produce shows on cruise ships called mm -hmm. Games at Sea for Crystal mm -hmm. Cruises. Mm -hmm. And I was producing their welcome aboard and farewell shows, and they had two ships. It's the five. They're like a six star ship. They're extraordinarily <laughs> expensive. Mm -hmm. But the godmothers of both ships. There was Mary Tyler Moore was one godmother, and um, uh, uh, oh gosh, my, my mind just went blank. Uh, Angela Lansbury was the godmother mm -hmm. to the other. Wow. So I wrote this. I wrote this. Though, I was going to direct the two of them. I had to direct them for the voiceovers and stuff for the for the welcome aboard shows that I wrote. So I had Mary Tyler Moore go into a studio in New York, and I was in L.A., so I wasn't going to meet her in person. So she was at, we, we, we hired a, a sound engineer. She's at the, set, at the, the station, I mean, the, the uh, audio booth in New York. I call her on the phone, and I'm going to direct her. And, I, you know, and I'm nervous. It's Mary Tyler Moore. Oh, my mm -hmm. God, you know, this is Mary Tyler Moore. So I was so scared, and I said, um, you know, we, we chit-chatted just a little bit ago. You know, hi, I'm Wesley R. I'm a big fan, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, it's time to record, Miss, you know, Miss Moore. So, uh, so I had this copy that I had written and I said, okay, let's, let's do the take. She did it in one take. It was perfect. Oh, wow. And I said, wow. I said, Miss Moore, I'll tell you, it, you know, a few more classes and you might have a career in this business. <laughs> <laughs> did she slap you? She, she howled. She laughed so hard. <laughs> and literally I did one take. I that's it, that's it. Done. And that was it. It was wonderful. Perfect. Nice. Oh. So talking, talking about directing, Terry. So uh, yes, 
and 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 then I had Angela Lansbury come into the studio in Los Angeles <laughs> to do her voiceovers. The sound engineer saw her, was so scared he knocked over his coffee into the soundboard. It blew oh. up. Oh no! This is this is a very high end sound. Oh. And it was packed. There was there were three other sound bays, and everybody was they were full. And I only had it for a, a half an hour. And fortunately, a friend of mine was directing a movie, and he was working on a movie. And he said, "Wesley, I'll give you the half hour." So I got it done. But the, he she scared this sound guy so bad. It was it was a nightmare. Oh my! Well, did she did she like walk in there and go? <laughs> 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 she, she probably because I think she was doing murder. She wrote. She he probably figured that if she comes in the door, somebody. She probably pulled die. a switchblade on him. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of odd. Every little town she visited, that you know, people floofy. You know, or, you know. They... Well, you know, it just dawned on me. The guy had a cup of coffee that fell, and she played Mrs. Pot. Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, she did. So maybe, maybe she could. Never mind. She could refill his cup. <laughs> okay, it's not funny. You know, you try. Maybe you use <laughs> wasting bomb. your best material on some audiences, Wesley. I can, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, trust me. This is my best material. I better get out of the show. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. I I enjoyed your. Uh, your what did you call that? A sol- uh, soliloquy on the last show? How do you say that? Soliloquy. Yeah, you're doing yeah your... I ruined I ruined it because I was I was peeing and I <laughs> yeah yeah I that's right yeah. and running oh, <laughs> I'm and I, 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 keep, I, I keep thanking God I missed that episode <laughs> and you do understand that I pleaded and begged with Kathy to come on the show I promised her a class act and now Kathy's like oh, <laughs> and <laughs> Kathy isn't going to talk to you for about a week now <laughs> oh no trust me no as you guys have to understand up, I'm right in the middle of moving. So oh, my house, I'm I'm just surrounded by like boxes, you know. So uh, it was like I had to make sure that I kept my eye on the one and only clock in the house that like oh. you know would tell me the right time. <laughs> yeah. So no, I didn't want to forget. You're not oh. moving to Mexico, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a Mercedes. <laughs> One of my favorite stories of Kathy is that Kathy and Phil, who played Chaka on Land of the Lost, were fr- were worked together and were friends before they got on Land of the Lost. Oh, no. Nice. Wow. When they were little bitty kids. Them. Yeah, they were in a commercial for, like, uh, uh, what was it? It was like the, the Burger Chef. Dinosaur Chef. No, Cheez-Its. Cheez-Its. Okay. Oh, Cheez-Its. Kathy? Oh, Cheez-Its. No. You gotta sing the song, Kathy. <laughs> sing the song that you and Phil sang on the commercial. We want a song. <laughs> oh, Leslie, I'm gonna ring your yeah. neck. <laughs> <laughs> and the one, Come and on. the two. I like munching, I like crunching, we like eating cheese it's great cheese taste in every bite. We like eating cheese it's oh I like munching, I like crunching, we love eating cheese it's I love the wild taste of cheese. Hey, more cheese it's please. They're great crunch crunching crackers. <laughs> Yay. Oh, wow. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah. You're making me want Cheez-Its now. Yeah, yeah. Hungry yeah. Now. <laughs> that was the whole point. <laughs> so we make cartoon Cheez Its. I can only eat cartoons. <laughs> uh, I don't think there's if any. You go to Kathy's, if you go to Kathy's website, I think she's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a video clip from the, from the, that early commercial of mm-hmm. the two of them, and you will certainly recognize Kathy and Phil, of course, was a Pakunia monkey, so you, yeah. you, he's the little boy in the back. <laughs> I actually, at one point, I had this friend, this guy, Chris Mann. He's a really good artist, and he did mm-hmm. a, a portrait of me. But he incorporated in this portrait all the work that I'd done, like all the different commercials and the series and all this stuff that the band I was in and all of that. And he incorporated mm. it all around my head. It's a, like a headshot, this painting. And uh, he has all the people that I ever worked with uh, sitting on uh, Cheez-It crackers. <laughs> so mm. it's like this real obscure painting. It's really wow. cool. but. Like he's got Wesley on a on a uh, cheese it cracker and Chaka, oh, wow. and then he's got all these different people that I've worked with. So oh, pretty wow. cool. You lost Wes- Uh-oh, Wesley. Wesley. Uh-oh. Wesley, do you get the, do you get the impression that we're boring these guys? 
Wes- no, Wesley not left. at all. Just left, man. Wesley just kind of fell off the planet. He's probably standing there shouting at the phone. I can't get back on the air. Because you're on the you're on the phone, Steve. But, uh, hang up on him. See if we can get him. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm not going through you that. Guys, you guys, hey. I have got, I have got. Hello. Yes, Hello. Yeah, I hear you. I gotta actually go myself. Um, no, I do. Sorry, I I do. I've 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 made a little chunk of time for right now, but I've got a a home to move and yeah. a state to get to. So I'm gonna go. But um, you guys are a, a riot. I bet you oh. have a blast. Thank oh, we you, Kathy. Being here, Kathy. We've been looking forward. Oh, yeah. my pleasure. And let my me know. My pleasure. Thanks and for thank, being on the show. Thank you. Again, uh, thanks for having me, you guys. Thanks you guys for being patient with my mess ups. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Yay. Bye. 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 Kathy, Bye. Coleman. Kathy Coleman. Yay. And now, another classic wrong channel moment. I saw my own teeth. It was weird. Huh? <laughs> that mean there's like six more weeks of winter? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Terry saw his own teeth. <laughs> you know what? I've seen that. I saw a report about those groundhogs, and they're wrong more than they are right, which makes me think that the whole thing is just a bunch of bunk. Well, it's like everything else. Well, remember the bugs, not to keep going back to War- Looney Tunes, remember that when they showed the groundhog under the, he like looks up real shy and he goes down, he's got all these monitors and newspapers and yeah. you know, radars and everything down there. <laughs> Terry sees his own teeth. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Terry. <laughs> he saw his own we're, teeth. We're two different people, you dig? Tony's <laughs> 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 oh, a hat. I can't huh? stop laughing about that. <laughs> <laughs> what? What's so funny? What? 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 What are you laughing? Because you saw your own teeth, so you give you six more weeks of winter. <laughs> what is the song? From, the song from Merlin. What? A song from Merlin Rob Rogue. Oh my god. Merlin Rogue. Oh god. I have no idea what the hell is going on. I I am in a flu. We'll wait till Allison is done and be back after this message. <laughs> 200 episodes strong and still going right here on the wrong channel. Marshall, Will, and Holly on the routine expedition met the greatest earthquake ever known. Leslie, did you ever think that maybe Mike uh, Brady and Rick Marshall were the same guy? They both had the curly hair and they were both great dads, right? I like that. But I, weren't there, there were two dads, though, weren't there? No. <laughs> no, that was Bewitched. Uh, oh. That was Bewitched. That was yeah. 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 The, the thing that I thought of was it would have been cool if you would all at least one episode change sets where like we had the Brady's doing their a potato sack race, getting chased by dinosaurs and screaming, you know, and then it's like, you, could you imagine if you and Holly and, and your dad, you know, if you were living in the Brady house and then it's like Enix, you know, den is, is Mike's den, you know, and, and, and you like go in there and, uh, and you're like pleading to him. But my bicycle, it's locked in the garage. And he's like, you know, I don't have the power. You know, you know he's like, you know, I don't know. I just thought it would be cool. Enix in, in Mike's garage. Never mind. Never mind. Terry, Terry, what? we brought you here for an intervention. <laughs> we all gathered. We all, have so- we all have something important to tell you how much you mean to us. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just had a message of Ann B. Davis and- Who's ready for some dinosaur? <laughs> well, it would have been nice to have someone clean the cave. Oh, yeah. We should have had Alice on. You know, when I, when, when, I, when, I, 
I auditioned for a show. Uh, my first TV show was called The Organic Vegetables, starring Kay Ballard. And it was produced by the Monkees, the guys that produced the Monkees. Mm. And it, it, we were supposed to go on the air in 1971. And I was the lead singer drummer of a band called The Organic Vegetables. And we all worked in her organic vegetable restaurant. That was the premise of the show. Mm. And the audition, I went for an open call in, in Variety magazine. I you know, just got to Los Angeles. I was, you know, and I, I was, <laughs> so I went to an open call. And when they hired me, they said, we've hired the pretty Greg Brady. <laughs> <laughs> and years later, well, a few years later, obviously I was on Days of Our Lives in Land of the Lost. I did a big concert in Florida at mm-hmm. the Hollywood, uh, Hollywood Theater with, 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 with Greg Brady. Oh, nice. And the two of us, and we sang and, and with a bunch of other people. But it was, So we, we actually got to work together, which was a lot of fun. And he is so much taller than me in real life. Is. I look like a pipsqueak <laughs> compared to him. So you were like Johnny Bravo Jr. Th- thank you. Yeah, I was like mini-me. I was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, fit the, you fit the suit. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Well, I'm excited for you guys at your 200 show. This is really terrific. Yeah, amazing. Thank you. I couldn't think of a better person to have on the show because, Absolutely. God bless you, you survived us. So, <laughs> yeah. and you're still talking well, now, to us. Now, the most, the most important question that, that every, every fan must ask you guys is, what have you learned in 200 episodes? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Not a thing. I, I'll tell you what we learned. We learned not to play the first 120 episodes at all. <laughs> yeah. There you go. If we're going to take anything away from this, I would say that's probably it. Yeah. <laughs> Did you think you would make it to 200? No. <laughs> I, no, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think we'd make it to two. <laughs> this is so sad, I must say. <laughs> what? Okay, What? what do you think... Other than, of course, my interviews, which are, of course, spectacular and the ratings oh, were yeah. high. Other than me, what what has what have what have been each of your favorite show? Other than you, that's that's a hard one to do. Okay, I please. like the camping episode that we did yeah. for the first oh, time yeah. years ago. That that to, mm. still to this day makes me cry. It's so funny. It is. Boy, that's that's a tough one. It, I I heard I found in a, like a. In, in my closet, I found the reel of the one where I was still a dune buggy and I had to do the show as the dune buggy. It was funny. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. It's it's tough. That, it is. That's kind of a put us on the spot question. Yeah. It's I have like quite a few. You what 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 Land of the Lost episode would yeah. you think? I still have a warm spot in my heart for the one that we had this comedian on who wasn't funny. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a classic one. Well, this this guy, Wesley, this guy said that he used to do routines at a pizza parlor. And I'm assuming, of course, you know what happens when you assume, that this was one of those pizza places that didn't have sit-in dining. You had to wait for your pizza to take it away. Yeah. And I think that's the only reason that he was in there is because people could only take 10 minutes of it. <laughs> Order up. Pizza, pizza. I felt like, you know, I never thought we were funny, but when he was on the show, I felt like we were the Carol Burnett crew. <laughs> pizza, pizza. Pretty much. I even got my cat involved, too. <laughs> and I feel bad because I have been ta- I have not heard or seen from the guy since he hung up on the show today. <laughs> pizza, pizza. Well, if you go to Little Caesars, you'll see yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yep, that's about it. <laughs> Oh. What about a little seizure? A <laughs> two brute. Here's a, here's an example of one of his jokes. Whether this is one of his jokes. Okay. Do you know what the K stands for in Kmart? What? Crap. What? Crap. Crap. Oh. <laughs> that was a. Why did you pick the funniest one? He said. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. He yeah, said that's he about went, what he we were saying, the, too. He said he went to the Home Depot and his house never showed up. <laughs> yep. But it wasn't as funny as what you said. He didn't have the timing that I just yeah. did. I feel bad talking about anybody. You know, it's a, I think it's because, you know, nobody, not everybody's funny, which is fine. I think it's because he said he was a comedian and he kind of yeah. represented himself. Yeah. And, and it's like. He said one thing that was actually pretty funny that unicorns poop Skittles. I thought that was funny. <laughs> so what I did is I, I decided to go with it and I said, 
well, if I was a unicorn, I'd do plenty of recycling. <laughs> and then <laughs> as soon as I said that, he said something about his mom had problems and the government wouldn't help her and stuff. And it yeah. had nothing to do with comedy. It just, just like, bottom yeah. down. Yeah. yeah. It was like, what? Yeah. What are you doing? Oh, after you've told me your favorite stories, I'm kind of surprised you're on for 200 episodes, too. I mean, not just that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 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 I can't wait to I can't wait to hear the next 200. Hell yeah, me either. It's, it's, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, hard, it's hard to say. You know, I'm sure I've got a favorite episode. I tell you mm-hmm. what, Tony Ganios, when he was on, it's kind of cheating saying, well, another star was on the show. It was, a, But he's something else. Oh, yeah. You oh, know, my God. If you've seen, you, you've seen Porky's... He wasn't acting. That was just him. You could hear him yeah. chewing the gum, and he's just like, you know, yeah, you end up bust your balls, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I kind of, again, I had to, I had to work. So yeah. I'm, I'm sort of glad that I wasn't around for that because it just seemed like the testosterone was just overbearing. Oh, yeah. So it was better if they had guy talk. Oh, that was definitely the I, main. I recommend show. you hear it. I, mean, I recommend you hear it on SoundCloud, Leslie. Yeah. Cause, uh, oh, I, I definitely will. I, yeah, because yes, I'm going. It, yeah. The thing, of, one of the things I really like about the, he was on the phone with us for five hours, even when he thought we weren't recording anymore. Uh, he, he, you know, Morky's was originally rated X, and he, and it's the funny thing is, is anything you ask him, he just right out answered it. It was mm-hmm. just like no beating around the bush. Oh, he just yeah. said, "Yeah, any kind of thing." And he had it, he had a photographic memory. He could just remember everything about the show. Oh, stuff. he did. He was yeah, telling us wow. some wow. scary, scary things too about filming Porky's. I'm like, oh no, yike! Yeah, yeah, it was really interesting. Yeah. What well, ha- ha- did he do? Any other films after that? Oh yeah, he did yeah, he, um, Die Hard, Die Hard Two. Yeah. Of course, bad- of course. Yeah. And he was also in one called The Wonders, which was before Porky. The Wonder, 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 Wonder. He also did, uh, I forget the name of it. He did it with uh, John Belushi. I forget the name of it. Ooh, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> hey, now, wait a minute. Both of you. I've warned you about fighting. Okay? What was when he started it? No, she did. No, wait, a minute. Was over. wait a minute. That's enough. <laughs> I'm going to kill you. Oh, well. So Wesley, it looked while you're thinking of that, Wesley, it looked like you had a lot of fun with this recent movie. Oh, it was so much fun. I mean, come on. Being on the set with Shatner and, and Christopher Lloyd and Gene Smart, I mean No, you know. no I don't wanna I don't wanna I don't want I don't wanna bust anybody's balls. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know uh, was, was Bill Shatner was he a real butt whistle? You know, like I really <laughs> Oh my <laughs> <laughs> Tony Gagnos actually didn't invent butt whistle like it. So I get credit. Now a butt whistle. Now that's an interesting, uh, that's an interesting invention. Uh, yeah, I, I, I got three of them on Amazon the other day. <gasps> <laughs> Let's know how they work. Oh my goodness! Yeah. <laughs> and the, the movie we were trying to think of was Continental Divide. That was it. Okay. All right. Ah, yeah, he has a story about yeah. him having a duo with a, an elk. You know, so it's really interesting. I really hike and I hike, hikely read, rem, 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 <laughs> yeah. He was told that the elk was fine and friendly and nice, and the elk yeah. was not nice. Oh, yeah. Well, well yeah, he asked the guy, you know, he's like, uh, you know, is the elk trained? And the, the animal <laughs> trainer with the elk is like, you can't train an elk. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> Unless you're hunting for him, huh? What? Never mind. Well, this, this new movie, this new movie is supposed to. I think they're trying to get it out by Valentine's Day. It's a romantic comedy where 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 um, uh, William Shatner plays a retired test pilot NASA guy, and uh, he's gotten old because the movie's called Senior Moments, and he you know he always tries to think he can still pick up the young girls. And he's speeding, and of course he gets pulled, and they take away his driver's life oh. because he he's, he's a senior, and he needs he, he shouldn't be driving, and that's how the movie starts, and then he falls in love with Gene Chat with uh, oh. Gene Smart. Oh man! So, uh, so it, it is. It's a very funny movie, and he and William and uh, he and Christopher Lloyd are best friends, and it's all filmed in Palm Springs, and it was just a, it was a, a joy to have them here. Oh, and around town and shooting all over the place. Of course, obviously being in it was kind of was a lot a load fun. But uh, that's great. So, well, it, sounds yeah, pretty good. It, as, it, a, it, as opposed to the last movie that they were in together, you know, Shatner killed him. So. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> so. so were you gonna? Uh, what? Uh, yeah. 
Huh? You know, Terry, Terry, Terry you, 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 you don't have a voice for radio. I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking maybe it's in, in person. <laughs> <laughs> I got my own radio show in junk. Yeah. Junk. Yeah. And junk. It's on every year. Every year. <laughs> it's on every year. That's how popular it is. It's, it's on called every the, year. It's called the Apology Non Fun Hour. I know. I it. It's like everybody telling me what, you know, that you have a, radio, a face for radio. I've been hearing that a lot. <laughs> and, uh, so. We used to have a. It was kind of like, do you remember the Thursday mystery shows that they had on, was it NBC? Where they yeah. had something different every week? Mm-hmm. Wesley, okay. do you remember that? I, 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 remember the I whistle? And remember. It, you know, had the guy with the flashlight. And the you know, it would have, have McLeod one week or uh, McMillan and wife another week. The next week, and, and it was the Thursday mystery show. So they, they taped Debbie them, does them. Dallas. No one ever actually saw Heck Ramsey, though. No, that was kind of a hearing that. mystery show, but mm. that's what we would do. We would try for the, to replicate that Thursday mystery show in our own gentle way, and it failed miserably. But still, mm. <laughs> the Apology Not Fun Hour was one of those, and yeah. Steve and I had one called um, On oh, Screen. What was it? Yeah, so, On Screen. screen. Where we're talking about different films, because I tried, mm. I tried my hand at doing Ali's Drive-In Trailers, and it tried to bring that to radio with Drive-In Trailers and describing films. I'm a big horror film fan, mm. and it worked for a couple of episodes, but you know, it just sort of. <laughs> and then we had Get Off My Lawn, which was yeah, more guy. It was talk. more me and Tony and guests. It was just us, yeah. right? Yeah, we didn't necessarily have to be funny, but we usually were anyway. But it was just yeah. had we had a, a topic, a discussion. Yeah. I think one episode we had Wesley Yor was our topic. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <Uh-oh>. <laughs> there you go. You know, radio radio is tough. I I I've I've been asked to co-host the big the, the number one radio show here in Palm Springs for a couple of weeks coming up in a few weeks, oh, nice. and I've been a, a regular guest in studio with them. And this is a show that has every major star that ever comes through through the casinos and in Palm Springs area and Coachella and all that. Wow. Stuff. So. You know, I, it is, and it, they're on for three hours live every morning. So, you guys, what you know, I, I am such in awe of of you guys, and to put on a show like this, it's 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 a lot more work than I I, I had ever imagined. So, <clears throat> it's, it's, so my 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 hat off to you, and <clears throat> even though I don't wear a hat, I just want to you know, it's him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the thing is, the thing is, we depend a lot on Steve's editing skills. Yes. Oh, very much. Oh, yeah. Let's, yeah, Steve yeah. is—he's the master. When we when he plays us, when he plays the the show the first time, we're in the chat room. You know, we'll give him a round of applause. We'll give it to Steve <laughs> at the end because it's it's his baby. Mm. It's fabulous, though. I mean, if he has such a knack for oh, thank you. seamlessly editing things together. He plays just the right bumper music, just the mm. right sound effects, just the right background. I mean, he really. You know, we, we owe a, a debt of gratitude to Steve. Oh, I'm going to cry. What? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I... I'm getting mushy here. You cry. <laughs> Me too, and I don't even need to be. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> of course, that's by way of saying that we couldn't possibly do this live. <laughs> I tried it live tried. once. Yeah, one time we, we tried it live once. And that was oh, it. Oh, boy. And that just... Five months. Once. Yeah. yeah, but to be yeah. fair, we sucked then anyway. <laughs> it's <laughs> like, you know... less after Steve gets done with us. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh, it was funny. Tony, or uh, Steve, actually on Facebook, he put a live Facebook camera on, and it was showed him interviewing me, you know, on a cartoon. Yeah. Yeah, it actually was kind of funny. Yeah, it, it kind of That's worked. Kind of worked. Great oh, idea. Well, let us know if you are ever interested. If you're not, you know, then be honest and say you suck. But uh, we would <laughs> like to put. We would like to do a YouTube video director's cut of Saturnalia with the commentary on it. Yeah, and you're welcome to join us if you'd like. That's not, that sounds fun, been, you, guys. That's a- yeah, you, you've been in the craft world, so maybe you could. I don't know. I, I, it's, it has Croft stuff in the, in the show, you know, so I don't know. You know, it's, it's, speaking of Croft, they're, they're doing a Palm Springs Comic Con coming up, which we, Kathy and Phil Chaka and I did last year. And we've been asked to come back, but this year, cause, uh, 
Sigmund the Sea Monster is back on the air on Nickelodeon. Who is it? And Johnny Whitaker, who played who played Sigmund, uh, I mean not Sigmund, but but played you know the, obviously the boy. Remember Redhead Curly Boy? He's now he he's playing an old seaworthy captain in this one. And so Johnny's coming to town. I just talked to him, and, and I think Marty Croft is coming. And at one of the oh. big theaters, we're going to premiere the new season's episode. And ev- they're trying to get everybody that's still around from the old Croft days to show up. Oh, There's wow. not a lot of us left. I mean, a lot of people have passed on. Mm. So Witchy Poo's still around, and, um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Kathy and Phil and I and a couple of the people from that show, and, and um, uh, um, well, uh, from... Um, Oh, my God, the Munster, Munsters. Um, Butch Patrick. Uh, Butch Patrick. Anyway, Butch, Butch, Butch is still around. He did, he did the, the Croft shows. So we're all trying to get together for like a little reunion, a little press thing, which should be a lot of fun to have all the Croft people back. Oh, oh that would sweet. be yeah. great. Yeah. Is Spencer yeah. going to be a part of it? Show him, uh, I don't think so. Spencer, you know, Spencer just doesn't want to do fan things. He's just uh-huh. very much to himself. Uh, we talked about him just... with, with Meat. You know, we talked about the Spencer situation, why he left, and I, we talked about you you all seeing him. And, uh, yeah, he was just like, you know, some people, they just want to get out of it. They mm-hmm. they don't like, they find out they don't want Hollywood and that lifestyle and whatever, and they just leave. You know? Well, he had a big career before Land of the Lost. He was he was on a lot of the old shows of Gunsmoke and a lot of the you know the the, the shows prior the the big shows in the '60s prior to Land of the Lost. He had quite a career with that. So, and the fan just did a, a beautiful painting of of Kathy and uh, Spencer and I, Marshall family, and he asked if we would sign it. He sent it to us. Would we sign it? Mm-hmm. And Spencer agreed, which I was really surprised. Mm-hmm. So I got the painting, and Spencer had already signed it. Oh no! Wow. I was, so he's he, he's not totally isolated. Mm-hmm. So you know, we'll, we'll 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 see what happens. But is, you is know, your time little, goes by quickly. You know, I saw something on YouTube not too long ago. Somebody did some slicing. I thought it was kind of clever. They uh, showed where Spencer left the show. You know, Rick Marshall goes through the uh, the doorway there and. And then all of a sudden they splice it and say, where did Rick Marshall go? And then you see him walking into the bar in Alice's on, remember Alice, the TV series? I think Spencer I made an appearance. Oh, I want to see this. It's up to all to find and send it and you send you a link. It's Would funny. You please, I want yeah. that. It's funny. Yeah, because he was a guest on there. Yeah. And yeah. I didn't like, Al- I, did, I didn't like Alice. I liked Mel and Flo. I think they should have had Ann B. Davis play Alice. It should have been like a Brady spin uh, you know, yeah, ooh, yeah. rock me, Ann B. Davis. Love Ann B. Davis. She was a humanitarian, you know. Is that like a vegetarian? <laughs> oh, no, no, not she wasn't a cannibal now. Uh, <laughs> cannibal. She, she helped oh, I guess this is- Painful. Like, I gotta tell you, speaking of, of you know, vegetarians and cannibals and stuff, <laughs> so I was sitting at home the other day. <laughs> yeah, because that's a non sequitur. You know, that's yeah, just right into it. <laughs> I, I'm sitting at home the other day and I get a ding on my computer saying that somebody had used my American Express card. Oh, no. Uh, at Outback Steakhouse for 85 bucks oh. in a town that, other than Palm Springs, where I live. So I called, I called Amazon. I mean, I called American Express and I said, you know, it's not my charge. I said, don't worry about it. You know, you know, we'll take care of it and all that stuff. So I thought, you know what? Cause I have a notice that somebody, if my card's used when, and it's not in person, I get, I get a report it immediately. Like if I, if I buy something on Amazon immediately when I, when I hit buy, I get a ding. Hey, you just bought something with your card wasn't there. So anyway, I, I said, you know what? I'm going to call Outback Steakhouse. Mm-hmm. So I called Outback Steakhouse and I go, Hey, my name is Russell Ewer. Somebody just used my credit card and she goes, Oh my God, hold on a second. And I waited and she comes back. She says, they're on the way to pick up a takeout order. Would you call the police? <laughs> and I said, sure. So I, I called the Riverside police in the town that this was at. And, and I talked to the dispatcher and she said, listen, it's probably somebody stolen your number. They, they make a small charge just to see if the card works. They'll never show up. But just in case, we're going to send an officer. I said, well, let me know. You know, let me know. So at midnight, I get a phone call from an officer. He says, hi, my name's Officer Such and Such. I've got two people in my car. Do you happen to know this person and this person? I go, no. Did you give me permission to use your card? No. Will you please prosecute them? Because we never catch these guys. These guys had shown up to pick up their takeout. 85 bucks worth of Outback. Mm-hmm. Wow. 
I'm going to fade in and make this really quick. It goes to trial. Twelve person jury. Oh. Uh, you know, and, and this went on for about a, uh, eight months or something. And it finally went to trial a few weeks ago. Mm. And I go into the courthouse because it's, you know, because now it's a felon me because these guys, you know, were trying to obviously do credit fraud and steal mm. stuff. Had they had they gotten picked up their order at the out big house, it just would have been a civil case. Mm. But since they caught him in the act, because that's why they never catch these guys. Mm. So I'm on the jury stand. I've got 12 jurors. I've never. The only time I've ever been in the courthouse is when I played played a defendant on television. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, this is really this is Terry Mason. I've got the judge sitting next to me. I've got the two guys that ripped me off. Two white guys over there just ripped me off. And they're middle aged white guys. With their, each of them have an attorney. I've got the you know the, the prosecuting attorney, this woman who's you know giving me the questions. She's asking me, do I know these guys? Do I give them permission to use my card? All that stuff, stuff like that. And and, and and you know, did you make this charge at Outback? I go, no, I didn't make this charge at Outback. I've never been to Outback. I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> but I'm they started the... laughing. That's they funny. were laughing so hard because oh. I am a vegetarian. Yeah, and yeah, you know. You know, I expected a bigger laugh, by the way, but okay, that's fine. And, uh, <laughs> story. I'll, I'll try it one more time. Because I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. So, so she, Just go so for that pity laugh there. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, Steve can edit in us laughing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I can. Yeah, put oh, up yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, you know what? I want a 1950s laugh. Okay. With the applause right, and the right, one, two, <laughs> crowd, three, here we go. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> so fade in, fade out. She says, "I'll call you for the the trial went up for three days. Three days for these guys stealing my my credit card. So uh, I only had to you know be there at the first. I was the first witness. So a few weeks later, she calls me. Says, "Well, they were convicted. All counts." And I said, "Well, did you like the line I got in?" She, about the vegetarian, <laughs> and she starts to laugh. The prosecutor, she says, "I used it in my closing argument." <laughs> and he's a vegetarian. <laughs> How much time did they get? Three years. Whoa! They said, now, I'm proud of you, Wesley, yeah. for doing that because I hate I yes. hate those kind of people. And, oh yeah. And I, you know you know what? Uh, uh, I don't understand. What I don't understand is how you said they're so hard to prosecute because it's like uh, a good friend of mine uh, who lives in your world, uh, he got his VersaCard, you know, hacked, you know, because they're like they, – they went to, someone went to like four gas stations and, and got them for like 300 bucks. They were like filling gas up for like 99 bucks each. You know, in those gas stations in your time, they have like surveillance cameras. And they can tell exactly who made those transactions in each station. Why don't they try to prosecute them? Because it's right there. The evidence is right there. Yeah. In it's, it's not a TV tough. show. It's, it's not NCIS. They don't have, like... <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a second. Right. I didn't say they had, like, a 3D uh, vapor lock imager. <laughs> I just said they had surveillance cameras. They can tell exactly when they made the transaction. It's not rocket science. Well, I these guys, seen. these guys, these guys had stolen my information and they had, had they made their own credit card with my number oh. and their name on it. Yeah. Oh man. Well, that happened to me too because they 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 used my debit card number and like the one transaction was a Coke machine for a buck and a half. Oh. Right. Wow. Hey. I just can't believe the That's when they try to they try to see if it works. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what, ever, that's why the, the Go ahead. Go ahead. No, what I said was really going to say was really stupid, and and it probably nothing to do with with anything. Well, you say it we say it anyway. Stupid. Did you ever eat a credit card? <laughs> that was stupid. Yeah, yeah I that's why I said I was going to say it. I, I was going to cancel that. You know how you say some things sound better in your head? Well, yeah. that I canceled it before it went from my brain to my mouth, and then you made me like you stuck your arm down my throat and pulled it out. <laughs> Yes, first of all, th- th- thank you, thank you for that image. I want to thank you for that image. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I, I, I won't be able to. Have you ever head. been to the sleep. dentist? They do that. Yeah. I asked the prosecutor when they who were trying to set up all the details of me getting to the courthouse and stuff. I said, "Now, is it okay if I wear a black hat, heavily veiled?" 
because I want to cry with a white handkerchief. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have the gloves too? <laughs> That's yeah, oh my god. No wonder she said no. <laughs> I forgot the gloves. See? You forgot that little tiny prop. <laughs> You're right. It's it, it's in the detail. <laughs> Do you ever notice though the court the courtrooms on TV never look the same as the real ones in real life though? This one the ones in real life have like whiteboards and it's just a bunch of yeah. modular walls and yeah. stuff. They're pretty. You know. Yeah, the ones on TV look kind of uh, old fashioned and wood everything, you know. Yeah, because it was filmed in 1957, so of course it looks yeah. like. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Everything's in black. You and know white. what? What? When I was on stand, when, because I wasn't allowed to hear to, to know any of the details. I don't know their prior crimes. I didn't know anything. They wouldn't tell me because mm. it turned out I thought I was suing them, but it turned out it was the state suing these guys, and I was just a witness. Oh. So I'm sitting there on the stand, you know, I'm so nervous. I got twelve people, you know, and those two guys who stole from me looking at me, with, and they're showing things on the, behind me on a on a screen, and I fortunately had saved the, the, the original credit card because of course I canceled it that night. Mm-hmm. With American Express, so I had that, so that you know they, they could see that it was in my possession all the time. Then they showed, they put on the screen a piece of paper with all of my personal information on it, oh, oh. handwritten oh. that these guys had done, and it was startling. I literally had to turn because I was in my car to turn around to look at it, and I literally say, well, "Oh, it was like it, you almost got the shakes." It was like yeah. the, the invasion, of course. It is, yeah, it was somebody, it's an invasion, yeah. I know. I, yeah. I saw it on court TV. I was like, wow, I didn't know this much. I'm, I, 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 I'm sorry, Wesley. I know what you're talking about. That's, that's, they, they should have marked out, uh, blurred out everything well. except what was right, like relevant there. Well, yeah, the redacted. Well, they could, they, you know, they, they couldn't because this is, this is the trial. These are the people who have to make the decision where these guys go to prison you know, for three years and they did. Wow. So yeah. let me, uh, ask this. If you had it to do over again, cause it's like, Normally, just credit cards. We do that. They they mark it off, and you get your money back in a few days anyway. But are you glad you right. did it? That's a good question because I was. Uh, I won't go to the. It was a rough year this year, guys. I had a I had a death in the family that pretty shook us oh. up. And oh, and when this sorry. all happened, sorry. When the uh, when the officer called me that night, would you please prosecute these guys? And I said, look, I'm in the middle of an incredibly difficult time for me. And I'm not going to be able to go to court. I'm not going to be able to listen. I don't know how, because I, I'm going to have to be having to fly different places to take care of family business and things like this. He said, don't worry. You'll never have to, you know, you'll never have to go to court. These guys always mm-hmm. plead. So, um, I kept getting these things, you know, we, we want information. I said, guys I told you, I can't do this. I, I, I can't tell you that I can be there. Fade in, fade out. My, my family member passed and, um, mm-hmm. and then I, uh, I think they forced me. I didn't do it. It wasn't me. It was the old lady, the kid, one of them. They even told me. I, I tell you, I didn't do it. All of us, everybody in the listening audience, all of us are vulnerable to this, as you know. You know, we're just a, we're just a right. click away on Amazon of somebody stealing our stuff. Right. Well, yeah, Stay yeah. Like so, the, the, uh, guy, the guy that looks just like me in your world happened to him, you know. So. Really? It's, it's happened to me three times. Really? Really. Yeah. Mm. Wesley, I want to say... I think on behalf of all of us, I speak for all of us because I'm the smart one. You know? uh, really? We'll go, we'll go with just that. kidding. We'll Come on. You know, just, just let him go. He's okay. on a roll. Oh, okay, there just you go. Just bust your balls. You know? <laughs> no, I'm serious, Wesley. I, I, I think on behalf of all of us, or at least for me, we're really proud of you, and we think we did make the right decision. Absolutely. because this Yes, you did. This identity theft is a terrible, terrible thing, and these people get away scot free, mm. and they ruin a lot of people's lives. Oh, they do. They do. I mean, they, they, you know, a lot of it's worse than just credit card fraud. They, they literally ruin people, and it's great that you did that, mm. and it's just a step toward hopefully uh, people taking it seriously and, and really, you know, I don't know. Well, the, I got to tell you, the, the takeout message of this is most credit cards offer this service, like American Express. That if somebody, if your card's used and you're not there when the card's used, you get it instantly notified. You can sign up for it. Mm. It saved me because my card had a high, they could have charged a lot. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I could have been up the creek. I mean, American Express would have taken care of it. I would have, you know, all that stuff, but still. So, so sign up. Go, you know, and when we, mm-hmm. you know, when you stop listening to the radio show, go, go, go to, go online, check with your, your credit card and mm-hmm. sign up for these programs. 
so mm-hmm. that if, if, it, if that ever stops you, you nip it in the bud. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Well, I, I think that uh, I think I would prosecute differently as far as the instead of sending them to prison, I would make them have to either pay your credit card balance or your student loan, and it's your choice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think okay. they might go to prison at that point. Yeah. I don't think that's going to happen, Gary. Well, the, the problem is they'd go out and steal the money to pay your credit card <laughs> yeah, and your student yeah, loan. Exactly. So it would just exacerbate, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Well, no, they, yeah, exactly. well, they will yeah, send, yeah. In the, send in the prison and they can work it off making license plates, you know. Well, they don't do that prison. anyway. So. They still do that? Do they still do that? It's like having them wearing a striped suit with a ball and chain with a pickaxe <laughs> freaking rocks. I'm, thinking, I'm just getting vicious. <laughs> well, well never, mind, never mind. The, it was just an idea. And everything, if you shoot down people's ideas... Then nothing will happen. Calm down. I agree. I agree. You know what? I agree that restitution should include some sort of some sort of huge inconvenience other than just getting the money. Oh sure. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, of course. Of course, I guess prison is a huge inconvenience. Yeah, so. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, I agree. So people that might be watching this uh, show, watching, uh, are here hearing <laughs> it. Well, if you ever put it on YouTube, they'll be watching oh, okay. it. Uh, even though it's not like us talking, it'll be like a, a stat never. <laughs> Uh, they'll probably like you know we want to hear something about Land of the Lost and all that you know mm-hmm. so uh, I was going to ask you something about Land of the Lost. Well, you know it's it's forty you know it it, it, it just went off the air like forty years ago, <laughs> and it's it it true it's amazing it's amazing how people still watch the show and and I have so many Kathy and I, which by the way it was so nice of Kathy to come oh, on. Oh yeah, yes, it was. I love her. It was wonderful. She's but, awesome. Yeah. Good audience like that. She, she is, and, and, and I, not, not to, I mean, not, I'm not, I'm not just blowing smoke, but please get her book, Run Holly Run, on Amazon, yes, yes, because definitely. I'm telling you, you, you will be shocked at this amazing storytelling abilities and her life, which is extraordinary. And the link to her book is but, going up on the website too. Thank you, guys. Absolutely. Thank you so much for her. Yes. She, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I love that girl. We, we have more fun. We do autograph shows together, mm-hmm. and we will go, you know, sit for three or four days next to each other at the convention center, and we will literally laugh. And one last year, we had I had we had three in a row, mm-hmm. one in Reno, one in Sacramento, and one in San Francisco. Uh, and uh, for we did Alien Con for the History mm-hmm. Channel, or for uh, yeah History Channel. So um, so Kathy and I decided we would just do a road trip instead of flying back and forth where we live because we live in different cities. I rented a car, drove up to Reno, mm-hmm. and then we just got in the car and made it. Would spend the week together, go you know, going sightseeing and stuff, and then go to the convention on the weekend, mm-hmm. and you know, so, so we literally shared a room and just had more fun. I'm telling you, I've never laughed so hard in my oh, life. Oh wow, that's it wonderful. Like yeah, Reno. That really is wonderful to hear that. Reno's beautiful. I've been there several times. It is so beautiful. Kathy may be moving up there. It's a beautiful yeah. mountain area oh, yeah. and stuff like that. I, I love up, up there. I years ago, I used to open for Bill Cosby mm-hmm. and at Harris in Lake Tahoe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nice. And so you. You always have to fly into Reno. You used to have to fly into Reno to get to Tahoe. You mm. just drive up up the mountain, and it's you know it's 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 quite a little town. I must say, I was surprised. When you opened for Bill Cosby, did you say you were a drummer in a band? Was that right? Me? No, I was a singer. You were a singer, just a singer. In I, I opened. I I did forty five minutes, and he did forty five minutes. Nice. You're I had a big act. Uh, twenty two. We had a twenty two piece orchestra. I had four girl dancer singers and costume changes and. Sang and danced and. Oh, wow. Wow. Do you have like video or audio of any of that? (sighs) There is some hidden somewhere. (laughs) (laughs) You know, know, we can't even get. Well, we do get that, but not live, you know. Right. Good gosh. That's that's really. That's, you know. I'd love to play some Wesley Year recordings on the show. That'd be cool. Well, that'd be well, you know, I sang, you know, I sang the theme song to Land yeah, of the Lost. Yeah. You can hear it, the, the opening. Wrong, yeah. Stuff, but, you know, that's, but, those are great. I love, I love those. Ever since. Yeah, I love them. I, you know, what I love is I love it all bands that have taken the the, the the opening song and the end song for Land of the Lost and done their own versions of it. Tenacious D, you can go to YouTube and listen to them oh, wow. do Black. He does a kick ass take, and not a takeoff, but a, 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 a homage to, to the song. Holly on a routine expedition met the greatest earthquake ever known high on the rapids in just 
There's a whole bunch of different bands that do the Land of the Lost theme song. Like a cover version. And they rock it out. Well, I like yours just the way it is because it kind of reminds me of uh, Green Tambourine, you know, from... Uh, yeah, Lemon Pipers. Lemon Pipers, yeah. It kind of reminds me... And I love that song. I grew up with it. So it kind of has that sound with the double tracking on your vocals. And I, I just love it. I love that because it's psychedelic pop that Land of the Lost theme is. I love it. It, it is. And it was produced by Michael Lloyd. But years ago, I was recording for Motown. Uh, there were four four white boys. We think, you, you notice we never <laughs> went very far. <laughs> so Michael Lloyd, uh, we were all, all these pretty boys at the time. And Michael Lloyd, who is now one of the top producers still in the country, of has worked with every act that you can imagine, produced major, major, major songs. He was a young kid, and, and it was his, his studio. He was one of the four boys. And so he produced that. Linda Laurie wrote the song for Land of the Lost and I, I went and sang it um, and then of course when Uncle Jack came in and Spencer left for the third season I had to go back in and they changed the lyrics mm. because you know Uncle Jack was searching uh, you know yeah. and it had so we had to rechange the lyrics and stuff like that but Michael was extraordinary his sound and all the sound tracking I mean it was amazing yeah. uh, back Uncle in the Jack day. kind of ruined it by going when he fell off the waterfall he went <laughs> <laughs> but and I saw, I saw in the interview. In the interview, he admitted how he, he did it bad. He, so it's okay. I I wanted to ask you this. And it's kind of canon. If you want it, if you don't want to answer it, it's fine. Or we can cut it out. But I was curious about the third season because everybody knows it's different from the first two. And oh, it's totally different. Mm -hmm. And did you went so in kind of in a bad way because it's like all of the sci-fi. Uh, weirdities like the Hitchcock stuff and the Twilight Zone kind of left, and it was just like today's lesson of the day. And you know, you had you had a uh, Jaws, who I love. Oh yeah, yes. oh, um, um, oh my God, Richard, uh, Richard Keel. Richard Keel, yeah. And, and he's, he's he's awesome. I'm a fan. I, I he's a great guy. And I mean, I don't. Like I've never had a, was he cool to work around? He was great. You know, um, I, right a few months before he passed away. Uh, we were with him at an autograph show at a Star Trek convention at the Rio Hotel in Las Vegas. And he was extraordinary. He was in a wheelchair. You know, what a, I remember being on the set with, uh, with Richard Keel. His, his hands were so, ex so huge. When I shook his hand, I mean, literally, literally like my hand was like a doll's hand in his. But we really got on. He and his wife, his wife was my height, tiny compared to Richard. So the two of them really, they, they, he told me that he met her at a bar. He was in college and they, you know, he hit on her and he had a great story about her and they, they fell in love and he had a son who I, I, I got to meet and get to know a little bit before he passed. They were just an extraordinary family and I, and, and I miss him and he was a great guy. He seemed great. It, it, you, you, know, the, you can tell when somebody's a great guy because they get a lot of roles. You know, it's like, I think the last time I really saw him was in Happy Gilmore. Remember that? Oh, yeah, of course. When he was just like in the audience and it's like the, the like the bad guy in Happy Gilmore, he, he kept hurting him and getting, I, I don't know, it was funny. And it's like, if, if you see a guy in enough roles, you know, he's not a butthole to work around, you know, and it's like, it, it, yeah. I don't know, he just seemed, you know, in, in uh, Moonraker, I loved it when he fell in love with the little girl, you know, the, 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 the little Swiss girl, <laughs> you know, it was cute, you know, I don't know, I like Richard Keel, but I, I didn't want to, uh, Get off track when I was trying to say I was just no that no because working with some of the guest stars and on, on the third season stuff so that was a lot of fun and you're right this the show because David Gerald who was our head writer for the first year who really wrote created Land of the Lost with Sid and Marty Croft you know he he wrote the Up Trouble with Tribbles for Star Trek mm -hmm. so right. David of course is one of the top sci-fi writers in the country today and teaches and lectures. And we had, you know, DC Fontana and Spurgeon and, and, um, uh, um, uh, Larry Nivens, all, all these, these amazing sci-fi writers. So it had an incredible sci-fi. And then it, you're right. It became very kind of, it, you know, it, was the jumping the shark, it was the jumping the shark moment for the show. Well, yeah. And I'm wondering, is it because they got rid of the writers for budget reasons? And then because they, maybe they got the Bay City rollers and were paying them instead of, yeah, I, don't, I don't know. You know I, 
they, they, when they let David go, that was the biggest mistake that they could have ever made. Yeah, because it's like, I mean, it it had its its uh, the one with the the guy, kind of the the disturbing one with the with the ship. Yes. The guy that wanted Kathy and take him, take her with him. Uh, that was pretty. That was that was interesting, and the Medusa one was good. It, but a lot of them, it was kind of. I I I don't want to be the fan. Like, why did you do this? But it's like the one where the Indian and the cowboy came from the custard battle, and then it's like they left, and you guys didn't follow them. You know, I don't I don't. There's this yeah. weird stuff. It's like Gilligan's Island. It's like who's the guest star of the day? Mm. And it's like there wasn't any science anymore. It was just like I mean, it wasn't any uh, mystery. It was just science stuff now. And right, Enoch, I, I I I agree. It 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 lost its thread. Mm. Right, and Enoch, who who we loved by being this neutral guy that hated, he had to be shamed into helping you. All of a sudden, it's like the, he was just a slee uh He was their bitch. You know, he was just like right. They were like, you know, we don't like them. You know, the the moon's looking weird today. It's got a marshal's fault. Go kill them. Okay, boss. <laughs> it's like what. <laughs> what happened? You know, and I, my, I guess my question is: Did you know it at the time, and were you just like, "Huh"? It's no, cool. I didn't. I, you know, because we we shot really, our, our, we shot two episodes a week. That's two and a half days to shoot a show, mm. which is unheard of. Wow! And I was doing, and I was also doing Days of Our Lives at the same time, playing my court, mm-hmm. and so you know, I was racing around and running and getting, learning the scripts. Like, like, okay, okay, what, what are we doing today? Oh, okay, yeah. I didn't really give it that much thought. Um, so, but of course, in retrospect, you, you, you get to see it, especially, you know, you look back and, and now that I actually, you know, have a perspective on it, then of course, yeah, it, it, it was the, it, again, it was a jumping shark moment. Mm. It, was, it was when it just, it became, it became a throwaway and predictable where the initial land of the loss was not predictable. It was good sci-fi with, you know, time doorways and, and matrices and all sorts of amazing things that for, you know, we, it didn't talk down to kids, and then and then you're right. It became like a sitcom, you know, the same old kind of, uh, you know, story beats. You know, the same, you know, beginning, middle, and end. It was very kind of sitcom-y, oh, yeah. and you know, so you're right. You're you're 100 percent right. So let's go away from that in the uh, in the season. So I loved the one the split personality where you all had the alternate uh, Marshall family and they were stuck in the wall. Oh yeah, wasn't that cool? Dylan. So was that like you and them, or did they actually have a real alternate? Be- I don't know, that was dumb. Uh, <laughs> I, I, this is a legitimate question. Well, was it hard for you to like sit there with your arms up? Because I don't know, like, that's that takes a lot of muscle. Well, you know, we, we're getting paid millions and millions and millions of dollars <laughs> yeah. per episode, so uh, of course I do anything. <laughs> okay, we got a taco. We we got a taco. <laughs> That's more than I got for jury duty. They gave me like an. I, I, it was like four days, and at the end, they gave me an ice cream cone. That was it. Well, you know what? I just did that trial. I was supposed to get mileage because it was an hour and a half from my house. Mm-hmm. I didn't get my. I never got a check for my mileage. Yeah. So you know, I I know your pain about jury duty. Well, I, I, yeah, they, I did jury nice. duty a couple of years ago. Well, I only had to show up. I got fifteen bucks for showing up. Ah. Yeah, but wow, what this for showing up? Even if they didn't call yeah. you. But You're a bad. They, they didn't use me. Then they said, "Go down, and pick up your fifteen bucks." I said, "Okay." I went out to breakfast. <laughs> they don't do that. In California. <laughs> they don't do that the first day. They only do that if you get called. Yeah. If you're actually called. Yeah, that's what I was saying. You're lucky. Yeah. <laughs> of course, wow. This time I did jury duty. Was at the exact course that you see Perry Mason walking up the steps. Oh. So that was. Do you cool. like? Do you like go and walk up the steps there, Tony, and pretend you're Perry Mason? Oh yeah. Because we're, we're built for anything. We don't talk <laughs> enough about Tony. He's a very special he person is. in a good way. Tony yeah. wears like 1940s suits and and like a, a fedora yeah, hat. Tony knows the location yeah, but... of the Batcave, too. So That's right. <laughs> and he was in a social distortion video. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I've got, to, I've got to run. I've got to take off. I've got an event to go to. Okay. So, see, okay. I must. See, you bored the I, hell I up now. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, 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 I, I, I got a nap. So, uh, it, and, uh, it was a bad game remark. I, I got at least 20, 
Yeah, I got 20, 25 minutes of sleep time during this. So I, no, no. I got a good nap, too. I, I love you guys. I, you. I love you guys. Yeah, yeah, you're, I'm proud of your 200th okay. anniversary. You guys are extraordinary. You are. And I wish you so much luck, and thank you for letting me come in. Oh, anytime. Yeah. You're welcome to come. I, I hope you can make it back again. We're still going to do the match game. Yeah. Thing. We're going to do it this time. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, we got to make that so, happen. An, on another time, and maybe, uh, maybe on the uh, 3,000. There so. you go. <laughs> Hey, we got it. We got to If you, you and Kathy are serious about the new cartoon, we gotta. I gotta talk to you about it. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So we'll let, we we will talk. Definitely. But I'm I'm, ho- I'm hosting a, I'm hosting a fundraiser tonight, so I need to, to take off and get my tuxedo. Oh, on. nice. Nice. Oh, okay. Well, have a nice evening, and thank you so much for joining yes. us. Oh, my thank pleasure, you. guys. I love you guys. Love you guys. Thank the, you. Love thanks you for too. letting me play. Thanks. Hey, good uh, luck with your fundraiser. Yeah. Your fun is it fundraiser or fun <laughs> like fun. Hopefully, it's both. Fun. Well, it's fun. Well, it's be fun, but hopefully it'll be fun with me. I, I <laughs> yeah, fun with Wesley. Oh, God. Absolutely. Fun with yeah. Wesley. That's yeah. a new episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just don't don't say that it's one dog. Long night. <laughs> 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 All right. All right, kids. I will talk to you soon. Right. Have fun. Wes, take care, buddy. Yeah. Take care. Thanks. Take Wesley. care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Wesley, you're... Yeah. Do you play this song on your show? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it starts right away. It was sooner just to come leave that everybody starts being like songs again. God. Oh, gee. I don't know. You played a song this morning, and the guy goes, uh, it's a guy and a woman singing, uh, and they say, I've seen Jim naked in the moon. <laughs> I didn't know what it was about. Weird. Oh, you're talking Jeez. about American Dream. Uh, Is that what dirt it was? Band. I've seen Jim naked in the moon. Okay, yeah, they do sound like they do that. <laughs> I see you making in the movie. <laughs> uh, hey! That, hey. Was song, that was the song where they, where they were talking about Jamaica as a pygmy on site. <laughs> oh, Lord. Well, that song also, I can't decide whether they're saying uh, Hillbilly Beard or Beer. Or what, you know? I thought they said beer, like what you drink. Yeah, so did I. Sounds, but they're saying beer. I gotta look it up. It could be really bear, like like the, the grizzly bear. Could be. It could be. By the way, this is the wrong channel. Yeah, <laughs> hey! Notice the show always starts in Wesley. Yeah, it does. Yeah. I was wanting to ask Kathy about that, uh, but she left too soon. Yeah, I had a question to ask her, was, too. Yeah, well, she was uh, like dancing with the bikini on when she was 11 yeah. for that candy man with the Mike Kerr uh, congregation. Oh, wow. It was weird. I think we it's talked like, about wow. that. I wanted, wow. I wanted to know if she had the Cindy Brady syndrome where she was forced to do the pigtails and didn't want to, and I would ask her that. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, probably she would have said, well, read my books. So. Oh, yeah, well, that's but, true. And now, another classic wrong channel moment. <laughs> local supermarket i went in the other day and i hear somebody singing online and i hate that i hate people who sing out in public you know they're standing on line they're walking in the street and they're singing i want to punch yep. them in the belly i yep. hate that yep and i hear this singing and i recognize it I, recognize it. I know it's annoying it's something i don't like and i'm just about to scream and i look and it's mandy patinkin oh my god I look at him and I just said, well, I can't yell at him. So I just said, let me try to use this. So I said, excuse me, I want to introduce myself. I just, you know, I admire your work. I lie, but I like his acting. I just don't like the singing. Yeah. And he totally freaked out. Totally freaked. Froze, started twitching. And I said, well, uh, I play guitar. Here's my album. I gave him an album. And he wouldn't, he didn't take it. He just stood there. I said, you want it? I'll just put it away if you don't want it. Yeah, man. I'll take it, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. He just kept saying, man. I think when he heard musician, he said, oh, I better call him man. And he was such a weird guy. I was on the verge of yelling at him. It would have been pretty funny if I had. Oh, my God. What much been done with it? Uh, <laughs> to hear it online, I just got up like a half hour before. I got to hear this guy singing online. And he was totally horrified. Here, they play in the subway for change. I hate yeah. that. No, I'm thinking of stuff. I'm working on a song in my head. I don't need to hear some idiot playing. But I uh-huh. do like 
Junto musician, the Mexican musician. I always give them money. I like that music. I'll play guitar on the beach for the girls, you know, but it's not as intrusive because, you know, on the beach with the waves and everything, you know, you, you back up 50 feet, you can't hear the person anyway. That's different, though. That's a different vibe. They freaking play drum sets in the subway. It ricochets. <laughs> so loud and so obnoxious you know you're, you're up in the morning you don't want to be taking a subway anyway and some idiots playing a drum kit now it's, it's a good reason i don't own a gun you know <laughs> 200 episodes strong and still well wait a minute we don't count the first 120 oh, good golly miss molly what the hell is this If, if you want to hear about my car lot confidential, we have some shenanigans and crap going on. Oh, good. So I'll, I'll tell you if you want to hear it. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, Lay it on me. We have um, all sorts of, of coupling going on, which is really nauseating when you step back and look at it. But this one couple apparently couldn't contain their enthusiasm for one another. And decided to have a little tete-a-tete in the elevator when it had stopped. (laughs) The elevator had had quit, and between floors, no less. So somehow, they managed to get into the elevator and do that. And not long after that, they decided to uh, have a little adventure in the upstairs men's room right around the corner from my office. Please. And person that caught i was off that day thankfully but the person that um actually heard them being a little too noisy um was standing outside the door from what i understand and the guy comes out and stupid ass doesn't think to say oh i'm gonna go i've gotta go wash my hands i forgot to go in and warn the girl <laughs> but <laughs> oh no <laughs> he comes out with this big shitty on his face like a dumbass, mm-hmm. and then she comes out all of a sudden, she spots that they've been busted, so she walks out, <laughs> head hanging down, and they were immediately fired, so, you know. Wow. So they were getting it on. Yeah, they were, on two different locations in the uh, building, and wow. that's not the first time. I also heard of an episode of two people, one of them is no longer there, uh, that were in the storage room where they keep a lot of the automotive parts and, you know, <laughs> things <laughs> And, and there's drunken people in the parking lot that are arguing and fights breaking out. There were fist fights between two salespeople and the cops were there. And, you know, that's what I mean. You know, it's far a lot confidential. Well, according to like Aerosmith, that's what elevators are for. Yeah. <laughs> well, in Aerosmith's world, yeah, you can get away with that, but, but not where I work. I thought that was an escalator. Love on an escalator? No. <laughs> oh. Sure, yeah. That's it. Somebody always tried to walk up down escalator or vice versa. Don't, don't, don't you hate when you get stuck on an escalator? It's like you're there for hours waiting for it to get fixed. Yeah, I hate that. They actually had a, there's a, I think there was a, a TV funny show in like, like 70s, early 80s called uh, Fridays or something. And they yeah, had a, that. They, they had a skit on that. It was called Escalator. You know, these people, that, the escalator stopped and they were stuck. It was like, you know, the disaster <laughs> 70s movies. And they stuck yeah, yeah. Escalator. Whoa, that's not good. Oh, I don't need this. I'm already late. Somebody will come. Anybody out there? Do you have a phone? No. Sorry. Somebody! Hello? There are two people stuck on an escalator and we need help. Now, would somebody please do something? Help! 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 <laughs> I don't believe this. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. <laughs> well, there's not enough left to do, is it? But that sounds like that, that's entertainment, Allie. You, really, it sounds like that's the entertainment you, mm-hmm. in that kind of work. That, that's the entertainment that, that a lot of uh, people had missed. I was one of them. It sounds like think. a soap opera as the car sells. God, it's just. 
unbelievable. It's it's like a Roman orgy downstairs. I'm just so glad <laughs> away from it. I'm upstairs in my little cubicle in the corner with my headphones on and you oh. know sending out emails. Damn. Oh. It's that's just, that's oh. what I wanted to ask Wesley about soap operas. What do they wear under sheets when they're doing lovemaking scenes? I've always wanted that's to know That's interesting. That. And, and I always wondered, it's like uh, if you watch like uh, the newer ones, they've got I, – I've always – okay, I won't like, – when people kiss each other, yeah. what are they doing? What are they doing? They're supposed to be making out. They're supposed to be love scenes. Well, you know, they got their mouths open and they're like doing these big like Frenchy things. Are they really Frenchy? What are they doing yeah, there? Yeah, they're real Frenchy. Ew! Are they really? Are they really doing it? I mean, uh, are these people don't even. They're they're not even related. I mean, no, I, I don't know. They're, <laughs> they're, they're not even related. They're not, no, they're that not, it would be incest. That's not incest. Not incest, incest, incest right. no, wow. I'm just saying they're uh, they're not married and they're not even boyfriend girlfriend. Oh, what what is it? What does the husband think or the wife when they see this on? Or they just purposely avoid watching it because they're like. They got their mouths open and they're like lit. They're locked together in junk. What are they? You know, it's. Weird. I saw I saw Jeannie Francis and Jonathan Frakes on an interview once. Now you know who those two are. Mm-hmm. Jeannie Francis on General Hospital. Jonathan Frakes with Star right. Trek, and they're married in real life. And Jeannie was talking about how she was all those love scenes that she did on the soap, and all the love scenes that um, Jonathan did on Star Trek. That is a job to them. That's the way they look at it. It's their job. It's like going to Burger yeah. King and making hamburgers, but they're, they're, you know, it's different. Well, if you want to go a step further, what if you're married to someone who's a porn star? You know, and it's like they're having sex with other. Well, I mean, where does it end? I mean, it's like kissing somebody. That's that's what you don't know how the porn ends. <laughs> How the porn ends? Is that a soap opera? No, yeah. perhaps. <laughs> How the porn ends? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that would be interesting just to have a, a TV show about car salesmen, like you were kind of hinting on, Steve. That would be, a, there would be a lot of, uh, oh, yeah. I'm surprised there never has been one. It would be it interesting. Really there was a there was movie. A Robin, Williams, Robin Williams movie years ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they made movies where it takes place in a car lot. Well, it was, I just think you could have a series watches. because you can never run out of makes of cars to uh, have oh, as yeah. the center of attention. Well, see, Kurt Russell was in a film called Car um, Used Cars, and that was pretty funny. It was about twin brothers that had used car lots across the street from one another, and they were going to great lengths to try to outdo each other. And they even one of them got strippers on top of the car, oh, but you yeah. know these all look like the wreck of the Hesperus kind of strippers, you know. But it's me is you'd we you would have think that by all the reality shows there would have been a car sales, you know, reality you show. So. Yeah. That's you would think too much way. reality. Yeah. That it's just my my place is nothing but loud music. But you know, if your place there's there's drama there, you know, you can make a reality show with all the drama that goes among the staff. There's- much drama that I'm still not even aware of. Yeah. I, I get filled in at little bits and pieces because it takes me a couple of days to process it all. Mm, yeah. How in the world do you even think with <laughs> where your plug? Yeah, I have, the, I have the phone in one in my left ear and I have earbud with 60s music in my right ear. And it's probably, it's, the, probably the same way you work and listen to the morning show at the same time. You just block it out. <laughs> I, no, I just turned the volume down. Allie can't because it's being piped. Oh, well, it's, it's not being piped into the office. It's just playing downstairs. And what's even worse is they have the main lobby where they play just ridiculously loud music. And then they've got the sales desk where they pencil the deals. They have a separate sound system. So we could be hearing that band who dropped the bomb on me and and Madonna at the same time. Oh, Nice. Nice. It's just, it's unbelievable, and I can't. I have to go downstairs through the sale through the the sales desk where you know the main office there to clock in and out, and my head is just thumping. So some some guy, you know, I could understand. I probably can get to you one day, or some guys on the phone. It's like I'm looking at maybe getting the coral finish in here. So. Ah! <laughs> 
I told them, I said, be very glad that I take medication because the building is essentially tile and glass. And where we are, the balcony has glass paint, glass panels along, you know, where you see these, instead of a, a solid wall, it's glass panels. And mm. there's big mirrors, you know, big windows in my office. And I said, be very glad that I'm on medication because one of these days I could snap terminals and monitors would start flying there'd be blood guaranteed you could clean it up all you want but the cops will come in with the luminol they'll find it trust me i think you should get an office like dell's because you said that one was pretty comfortable stop it well i'm just saying sit in the chair and take dictation don't make anything out of that (laughs) (laughs) wise guys just you know yeah, just say this. <laughs> oh, Allie, come on. <laughs> this, is a kid, this is a kid's show. Yes, yeah, <laughs> Kid's show. Sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> hey, boys uh, and girls. Hey, boys and girls. They were going to listen to Allie and Dell. Yeah. We, just, we, we, we had one of the... One of the um, the sales reps was in there today working on the terminal. And he was saying, we, he was saying something about... Now, here we go. We're going to, I don't want to offend anybody, but there was a married lesbian couple that he had sold a car to the night before. And they were very combative in the beginning. And the, the one that he was dealing with sort of like a man. And at the very end, she gave him a hug. And I said, are you happy now? You're an honorary lesbian. How does Aww. that make you? There you go. <laughs> honorary. What a title. Honorary <laughs> lesbian. How does that make you feel? <laughs> Welcome to Honorary Lesbians. <laughs> Take one for the team. Don't they yeah. have a meeting house or something? <laughs> I've never heard of an honorary uh, <laughs> title like that. How do you? How do you never I, I don't know. I don't know. But he, he seemed to be quite pleased with himself when he, we called him that. So. <laughs> oh, hang, hang, hang on a second. Hello, Dale. Hi. Hey, Dale. Yeah. Oh, you mean? Oh, you asked really? Oh, cool. He has a what? Gem for it. He has a, he has a, a script for us to write. Really? What? Really? Is it like, really? Like what? Yeah, six months is about time to give us something to do, huh? <laughs> but, uh, okay, I'll tell him. All right. All right, well, Dell. All right, bye, Dell. Love you. Love you, Dell. We have a new assignment. I'm. Oh, I shudder to think what it would be. We're supposed to write a parody for a chewing gum combination laxative gum. Okay. Is this the same thing as don't take a sleeping pill and a laxative at the same time? <laughs> no, it's just chewing gum and a laxative. Well, how about that? Uh, oh, hi, I'm stressing. I'm chewy, 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 <laughs> chewy, chewy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, it's got a butt full of things I can say. <laughs> oh, my God. I wasn't aware you were able to chew gum and crap at the same time. <laughs> You'd never you have to me find out surprised. How. I know I can't do it. <laughs> God. You can do anything if you try. Put your mind to it, yeah. You can't fly out of a window. Don't tug on Superman's cape. Don't, Don't spit it in the wind. <laughs> that was probably the original lyric, but the, the record company told him to change it. Yeah. Probably. Don't, Don't <laughs> mask off the old Lone Ranger. Walk and like a Filipino. Don't mess around with <laughs> phlegm. No. <laughs> Walk like a Filipino. <laughs> Oh. It kept me awake in the drive home. <laughs> I couldn't get that out of my head. I made it up and I couldn't get out of my head. Well, those oh. are the ones you, you inflict on yourself. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, the ones I come up with, I can't repeat. So. Yeah, that's they're, they're just, I mean, they're too vile for this show, so that's got to tell you something. Uh-oh. Well, the problem is I get a song stuck in my head and then I start changing the lyrics around. For some reason, they always involve Elmer Fudd. <laughs> I can picture that on some song. Elmer Fudd very, sings Def Leppard. Very quiet. So tell me this: Why was Elmer Fudd able to like just a shirt and no pants or underwear or anything? 
Hmm? No, wait, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking of Porky Pig. Yeah, Porky Pig was like yeah, that. Duck was like that. Yeah, I don't, you know, yeah. you know, Donald Duck is okay because they're covered with feathers. I think it, you draw the line with Porky because he's just naked. It's like, <laughs> you know, it's just, it gets a little, it, you know, it, it, Porky. How many times did you ever really think of Porky being a pig? It, it was just, he was just pretty yeah. much like Elmer Fudd. He was just kind of a human. The only thing that made him pig was what? He, his nose. That was it. Wait, Porky never wore pants. I don't remember Tony Tony Donny saying that. Aww. Which wouldn't the did, no, Porky, in the early days know, of, the, of, the, of the cartoons of Warner Brothers, I think he had, like, a friend named Gabby, a goat. Yes. Maybe, I don't remember there was like yes, a he scene, did. Yeah, there was a scene where they were doing something, and they took off their clothes. They were getting dressed. And they were just, like, butt-ass naked. It was like, you know, even <laughs> as a kid, I was watching that, and I was thinking, naked, you know, what, what's going on? I just thought it was weird. It's like, cause I guess, you know, you could have a duck or a moose. Have no, I don't think Bullwinkle wore clothes, but you never really thought of them being naked. But then when you get like no, no, no feathers or fur, then mm. it kind of looks naked ish. Mm. Well, well, I'm not saying they had their dong sticking out. And stuff. I'm just saying it's not anatomically correct. I mean, they, they made no, no, like, it wasn't like that. It, I, yeah. I guess there's nothing wrong with it when you think about it. Because, yeah, when you're a kid, who cares? You can that crap. Well, I, I wouldn't offended. It. it was more funny yeah. to me. It's like, oh, this is where they get naked. It's like, Didn't somebody actually raise a fuss over some cartoon character in a pants? People raise a fuss over every guy staying yeah. and saying, yeah. "Oh, son of a bitch, son of a bitch, son of a bitch, son of a bitch, gun." <laughs> you thought I was gonna say, "Son of a bitch," didn't you? You know, people in London when they sneeze, they don't use their sleeve or a handkerchief. They just sneeze into the air. Oh, no wonder they're sick all the time. They do. They do. That's just nasty. Yes. Ew. Yeah. That's disgusting. It is. It is disgusting. Yeah. That's just that's just like people here in Florida. I found out when they fart, they don't cover their butt. It's just okay. I don't understand that. You, you 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 don't want them to cover their butt because that means the farts on their hands now. And <laughs> you don't want the fart on their hands. Just let it go. Let it go at the butt and let it be done with. All right. Then that's the same way with. Uh, Sneezing. They don't want it all over their hands, so they just let it. Well, no, you don't catch a disease from a fart. You catch a disease from <laughs> sneezing in the air. How do you know you don't catch a disease from a fart? They haven't just haven't discovered it yet. Then you have an unpleasing sneezing and wheezing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if you do it enough, the calliope will crash to the ground. Yeah. 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 And Steve, you, you were mentioning this morning that you wanted something besides Terry Summers saying, What are you doing? Yeah. But maybe you should have all of us saying, What are you doing? There you go. So everybody say, what are you doing? Take turns, and then I'll splice it together. Well, okay. Just say when. All right, Allie first. What are you doing? Tony? What are you doing? Terry? What are you doing? There you go. What, what are, are you doing? doing? Yeah. Yay. Yay. Stuff to use on the chip. Yeah. I got there we go. You suck. <laughs> That's more of an homage to Six. We miss Six. Yeah. yeah. He was a great guy. Hey, but you know what? I my thing about Six, it's it's so sad he left us, but we should be just uh thankful that he was able we were able to have him on the cartoon in our show. Oh yeah. So, yes. And I'm sure Six is really glad too. Oh yeah. Yep. I think he enjoyed it. Yeah. I think he did. He's too. probably looking down, shaking his head right now. <laughs> he's probably up there what down. In the at, world is wrong. He's probably you. looking <laughs> down at us, looking down at us, and still going, "You still suck." <laughs> <laughs> what is it with you people? Move on, for God's sake! Yeah. If I go to the pearly gates, I'm hoping I see the bunny rabbit going, "Go long!" <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to, we're talking about you guys. See Saturday. There you go. Yeah. Hey. Right. Hey. What? what? It's time to say goodbye. Yeah. Can you okay. believe that? 200th show in the can. Yeah. Well, I started out in the can. But <laughs> woo, woo, woo. Hey, big shout out to, uh, oh, who? To, uh, oh, hey, raw, talk, raw talk online.com. Yeah. Yay. Yay. Demented radio. Yay. Is like Demented radio? Demented radio. Oh, yay. Yeah. And I started to mention last time he cracked me up about their logo. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it makes you, if you stare at it, it makes you dizzy. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, the Mad Radio. Who else has we got? Uh, Hamilton Radio. Yeah. yeah. And uh, StarFM.com. Yeah. Oh, oh and, and uh, maybe you should mention that the wrong channel has its own website. Yeah. Yes. The, the wrong it channel. Does. The wrong channel dot net. Yeah. Evidently, Wes just checked something out because he knew Meat was on the show. Yeah. Or something. yeah. We're also on SoundCloud. Yeah. Yay! Woo-hoo! Yeah. Big thanks to Wesley and Kathy for coming on. Yay! You got to you got to talk to Holly. You got to talk to little Holly. Yeah, be sure to check out Kathy's yes. new book, Kathy Holmes' book, Run, Holly, Run, available on Amazon. Yeah. Yay. And check out Wesley's book, The Red Wings of Christmas. I've got it and read it, and it's really good. Watch it for that new movie, Wesley. Yeah, The Shining Part 8. <laughs> Senior moment. Are we, are we done? Let's be done now. In more ways than one, I'm sure. Uh-huh. <laughs> <We're finished. laughs> Good night, Mr. Dixon. Thanks for stopping by. Now get out.